Hey guys, welcome to Core Student Ministries. My name is Alan Lystico and I'm the youth pastor and I just want to say welcome to our channel. Hey, if there's anything that you have liked so far about our channel, make sure that you help us out by hitting that little subscribe button and ticking that bell icon so that you're notified every single time that we upload a new video. Because for us at Core Student Ministries, we're all about family. We're all about community. So if you feel God leading you to join the Core family, that's one of the best ways to do it. Also, if you go over to the About section, you will find links to all of our social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, you will find the links to those down below. Hey, leave a comment letting us know what you learned about this week's uh, message and also what you learned about God. Also, make sure that you like this video and share our channel to all of your friends and family. And lastly, we uh, go live for our youth worship every Wednesday night at 6 p.m., either on Twitch or on Facebook.com. Again, you can find those links down below. So if there's anything that you want to know about us, make sure you go to corestudents.org. That is corestudents with an S dot org. Find that down below. And hey, let's jump over to our message for this week. Guys, I am really sorry. I have no idea why it was doing that. Um, I'm going to have to work on it here after after the live stream to uh, figure out what in the world was going on. Diagnosing the stuff in a live stream just makes it look really uh, unprofessional and makes it look really, really bad. Um, so we're just going to jump right into our message for, to, for tonight. Um... So, I want to actually catch up with you guys. I want to know how you're doing during all of this, and how you're holding up, and and you know how you're kind of getting through being stuck at home. Um, so, my first question to you is: How are you holding up during this time of social isolation and distancing? Go ahead and and uh, type type your answers in in chat for me. Um, I just want to check up on you and make sure that you're doing okay. So, so share with the community how how you're holding up during this difficult time. Yeah, me too, Cheyenne. <laughs> the right boys are are quite content being at home playing video games. I'm sure actually quite a few few uh, gamers are probably enjoying this time. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well there, uh, Callie. Um, sorry that you're bored. Um, I'll try to put some stuff up on social media that will kind of occupy your time. But remember, Callie, you've got two lessons to do for confirmation um, last week and this week. So make sure you get onto that. Going crazy. Yeah, so am I. And so are the rest of us. Now, this next question might seem a little odd. Um, because we most people don't assume that there is any sort of faith development happening when you just sit at home bored out of your mind. But there is faith development happening. Learning how to persevere and learning how to have patience. Learning how to be around someone 24-7. I mean, we're around our families 24-7, but not like this. I mean, you guys, five days a week for eight hours each day are at school and your parents are at work. 
Well, now you're around them 24-7, or maybe even your siblings, you're around them 24-7. Um, but how have you grown in your faith over the past couple of weeks? Since we haven't been able to get back together, um, you know, over, it's almost three weeks now. Actually, it is three weeks now. Um, you haven't really been able to connect to the youth group or, you know, be involved in D groups. So how have you grown in your faith over the past few weeks? Or have you felt kind of like your faith is dying a little bit as a result? Go ahead and put your, put your uh, answers in chat. Cheyenne, you messed up dinner. How'd you mess up? Well, I saw that you messed up uh, the potatoes earlier. What sort of potatoes are you guys making? All gratin or baked potatoes? How have you grown in your faith over the past three weeks? By trusting in God. That's a good answer, Luke. That is definitely something that's very difficult to do. Um, you know, I know that you know for for a lot of adults, you know, this is a very scary time because with uh, you know states, I don't know if you guys know, but you know, entire states are starting to lock down and and you're having curfews and stuff, and you know that means some people aren't going to work, so some parents are really nervous. So having trust in God that He's going to get us through it, I mean, that's that's huge. Write down everything and trust that God is there with me. Yeah, again, trusting God is definitely probably up there. The top priority dealing with our faith. Well, guys, I want to thank you for, for being willing to share. For those who did share. Um, and before we get into our message, I, I want to kind of do a recap over the past couple of weeks because uh, some of us may not have been able to join us last week and so you may have missed it. And if you have, please go to our channel. You can see uh, last week's message. It's up on, on our channel. But during week one, the, the week right before spring break, we started this sermon series, What is Faith? by learning that an invisible God is real just like the air that is invisible is real. I mean, the air that we breathe, it's invisible, but yet we know it's real, and God's the same way. And then last week, we learned about Cain and Abel. How that both of them had faith in God, but that they showed that faith very, very differently. Well, tonight, as we continue to read through the book of Hebrews, we're going to learn about the faith of Abraham. And how through his obedience to God, he was able to feel God's presence for real. His faith was real to him. So what I want you guys to do is go ahead and, and open up your Bibles, whether it's a physical one um, or maybe you have a, a Bible app on your phone. Um, go ahead and turn into your Bible app. And we're going to be reading from the book of Hebrews. All right, We're reading through the book of Hebrews through the entire sermon series. We are in uh, chapter 11. All right, and it's up on your screen as well. We're in chapter 11. We're going to read verses 8, uh, 8 through 10. And I need to turn to it as well. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10. Listen to God's word. By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Will you pray with me? Abba Father, we want to thank you so much for tonight. Even though we've had technical difficulties and really couldn't connect and worship, God, it's not about the songs. It's not about singing. It's about worshiping you. It's about expressing our love towards you and how important you are. And in this time, as we do digital ministry, as we're trying to connect as a community, as your children, through the computer, through our cell phones, through the internet, God, we just pray now for your grace. 
We're trusting you, Lord. We're trusting that you're going to get us through this. Help us not to be bored anymore. Help us to come back to one another as brothers and sisters in the faith and spend this time as a community. God, we pray for all those who couldn't make it tonight. We pray that that they connect to you in a very real way. Lord, take me away so it not be my message, but let it be yours. We pray all this in the name of, of our Savior and of our King, Jesus. Amen. There once were these two brothers who were trying to decide if they were going to go on a mission trip. The trip leader made a promise to them both that if they would go on this mission trip, that their lives would actually get better. Well, of course, one brother immediately signed up, while the other brother, he asked for more time to think about it. Now, the brother who needed time to think about it, who didn't sign up, he decided to go to his friends and ask them for their advice. They quickly started making fun of him, and then they shared with him all the things that he would miss out on if he went on this mission trip. The parties he was going to miss out on, lake days, going to the beach. Well, unfortunately, that brother, he did not go on the trip. And as a result, died at a party that he went to. Now, the brother who did go on the trip, he found an ancient coin buried in the dirt. When he came home, he did some research and found that it was a very rare coin worth a lot of money. And so he found a private collector who bought it from him and he became instantly rich. This is how our faith is. And this is how Abraham's faith was. Now for some of you who may not be familiar with who Abraham is, Abraham is a man from the Old Testament who lived about 500, maybe to 1,000 years after Cain and Abel. By this time in the history of the Bible, God's children had completely walked away from him. They started to worship other gods from other kingdoms. They started to do things that were completely against God's laws. In fact, it got so bad that prior to Abraham's birth, God would flood the entire world, keeping only Noah and his family alive. I mean, you may know that story. Noah and his ark. Abraham was faced with a very difficult situation. As he grew up, he lived in a home that was not very accepting of God. Knowing who God was or even hearing his voice was strange to Abraham's family. Yet, God still called out to Abraham by name. Strange how our lives and Abraham's are very similar. I mean, some of us right now live in homes who don't know or believe in God. Maybe, maybe we have friends who don't care to have a relationship with God. Even though he was faced with such a difficult upbringing, Abraham was still faithful to God's calling. Each and every day, we as a community, as people, as a creation, we're faced with two options. The first one is reality, and the second one is fantasy. So I need your help now with this with this question. I need your help with, uh, with kind of figuring out where God falls into all this. So we have reality and we have fantasy. And I need you to answer in chat. Which category do you think God falls into? Reality or fantasy? So go ahead and answer. Take a a minute or so and, and answer in chat. Where does God fall? Is he in reality or is he in fantasy? Go ahead, answer. Luke says both. That's an interesting perspective. Kyle says both. What about the rest of you guys? Do you think God falls in reality? Or in fantasy?
So both. So the consensus is that we think God falls into both categories, both reality and fantasy. Natalie is going against the grain. She's saying reality. Interesting. I think Natalie's cheating a little bit since she has a husband who uh, prepared the message and uh, she probably heard me talking about this stuff. Alright, take one more minute to answer. One more minute. <laughs> I can hear Natalie in the living room. Nope! <laughs> well, here's the truth. God falls into the category of reality. And he falls into the category of reality because God created reality. Now, since I've said that, and especially given the fact that most of you guys said both, you may be wondering, what is the difference between reality and fantasy in our faith? Well, for faith, reality is believing in the unbelievable. It's trusting our lives to the unseen. Just like we trust that the unseen air that we breathe is actually making it into our lungs. Reality of faith is being active in our faith. It's about turning our eyes away from ourselves and looking towards God. So here's a, a great example of what, what I'm trying to get at. Now, you may have seen this uh, on social media before. But here's a picture, all right? It's this leaves, dirt, grass, and in this picture is hidden a very venomous snake. All right, I want you to type one in the chat when you find the snake, if you find the snake, all right? If you can find the snake in this picture, the camouflage hidden snake, I want you to type one in the chat. Go ahead, type one if you can find it. Take a second. It's pretty hard to see. Some who have eagle eyes, they'll probably be able to see it, but uh, for a lot of us, it's it's really, really hard. See if you can find the snake. Now, since I've already done this exercise, I, actually, I can see it right now. I can see it as plain as day. But I'm curious to see if you guys can see it. If you can, type one in the chat. Chase, oh, is that it? <laughs> if you found it, type one in the chat. And of course, we know because the snake has camouflage, it is very, very difficult to see in this picture. It's difficult to see through all that brush. Now, I just want to give, give just one more minute because no one's typed in chat yet, so I don't think anybody's found it. I'm going to give one more minute, give you one more chance to see if you can find the camouflaged snake. All right. Ooh, Cheyenne found it. So now that we've had some time to look at it, I want to show you where that snake's at. Did you see that? When you first looked at that picture, did you see that's where the snake's at? Is that where you thought it was? Well, now that you know it's there, every time you look at that picture, now you see the snake. It's, I mean, it's obvious. It's right there in front of us. God is a lot like that. When we are distracted with the things of this world, He's nearly impossible to see. We become so focused on ourselves that we can't see what is right in front of us. Now that we've talked about reality, let's talk about fantasy. You see, fantasy is the reality of ourselves. It is a mindset completely focused on what we desire and on what benefits us. 
our eyes are diverted away from the face of God and focused on the what if. What if we don't go back to school the rest of the semester? What if prom is canceled? What about my grades? Am I going to graduate? What if I go out of my house and I go to Whataburger for, for some food? Am I going to catch the, the virus and get sick? It's about the what if. And as we look to Abraham as an example of the reality of faith, we notice a few things. Firstly, Abraham had his eyes set on God. In fact, he was actively looking for God. And when God called out his name, when he called out Abraham, he heard God's voice. So I'm curious to know, and, and we've talked about this before in, in youth group, have you ever heard God call you by name? Now, in this question, you can answer in chat if you want, or if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. And I want you to know, if you've, if you've never heard God call you by name, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're a bad Christian, or you're a bad disciple, or that God doesn't love you. It just demonstrates where your focus is at. So go ahead and chat. If, God, if you have heard God call you by name, type yes. If you haven't, type no, if you feel comfortable. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. Yes, if you've heard him call you by name, no, if you have not. So go ahead, type it in chat for me. Take just a quick second. Have you heard God call you by name? Yes or no? Well, as you're still thinking about that, and for those of you who, who are struggling with that question, that's okay. Again, I want to remind you that if it's not happened, that's fine. There are countless numbers of Christians who do a lot of great things who've never heard God call them by name. All right, So it's completely okay. You'll get there. But the next thing that I want us to focus on is that even though what God was asking Abraham to do when you look at scripture. I mean, he was asking Abraham to move. Right? He had to leave his home and go to a foreign country that he had no friends. He had no family members. He didn't have a job. He didn't know anybody. He had no connection to this foreign land. And yet, God asked him to go move there. And that's incredibly scary. But Abraham remained faithful to God. He remained faithful by going out into the world, by living out his faith. God is constantly challenging us to go outside our comfort zone. He calls us to live a life fully obedient to him. Now, doing that can be paralyzingly scary. Right? And, and the truth is, I see this every single week. I mean, so do you. You see this every single week at youth group whether it's the games that we play or maybe it's in D groups when we're asking for someone to pray out the group as the night is ending. I mean, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I, I start off with a game and I ask, you know, who wants to play a game? And it's like always the same, you know, six or seven hands that go up. And then a bunch of other kids just kind of sit there and say they don't want to participate. And the same thing in D group and you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, we're, we're asking for blessings and prayer concerns because we're finishing out our D group discussion. And once that's done, we ask for someone to volunteer to pray out the group and all eyes drop down. Ironically, praying, please don't pick me, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. Because we're scared. And for so, for so many they become paralyzed with that fear and they refuse to live out their faith. And what I want you to know is that I, I'm 100% certain that Abraham felt that same exact fear when God said, you're moving. I don't want you to take anything with you. You're not going to take any friends or family with you. You're not going to have a job. You're not going to know anybody. I just want you to move. Just go. Go to a land you don't know and live there. And for Abraham, that wasn't just hopping in his car and driving over to Cleveland or to Huntsville or to Lufkin. 
And that wasn't getting on a plane and flying 13 hours over to Israel. I mean, he had to walk there and he had to deal with lions and, and venomous snakes and robbers and thieves and, and a whole bunch of things. It was very scary for him to leave. Yet, he did anyway. To truly understand our faith, we must live out our faith. And what I find so cool about the reality of faith in God is that we're not alone in this. Again, when we look to Abraham as an example, we see that he wasn't alone either. When Abraham had faith and he left and he moved to this foreign country, God blessed him with a family, a wife and kids, a community, a kingdom. I mean, God gave him everything. So Abraham wasn't alone. And through Jesus, we have an entire family of believers who are all scared to follow their faith. While some might be scared to openly pray at the end of D group, others might be scared to read their Bibles. Each, of, each one of us has something that hinders our ability to completely embrace the calling that God has placed on our lives. And trust me, when I say I know exactly what that fear feels like, now, as all you know, we went to Israel a couple of weeks ago for a spring break for a mission trip. But what you don't know, and the team may not even know this, is that that trip has taken eight years to put together. God first called me as a youth pastor on that trip back when I was in seminary in 2012. He told me that someday I was going to take a group of teenagers to the Holy Land to see where his son lived. And when I first started talking about this, for so many people... They thought that Israel was this third world country in the Middle East, completely overrun by terrorists. Yet Israel is anything but a third world country. They have malls, they have Wi-Fi, even at times better Wi-Fi than we do, especially here in Livingston. They have cell phones, they use social media, they have TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram. Actually, in fact, near the end of the trip, we're staying in, da in downtown Zion Square. And during this time that we were in Israel, there was the celebration going on called Purim. I'm not entirely sure what it was, something to do with Ruth, celebrating Ruth, a character from the Old Testament. But anyway, for about two hours, the mission, the, the mission trip team, they sat on the balcony or up on the roof of the building that we were staying at, and they literally watched a bunch of teenagers your age walking around with drawstring backpacks, their hats flipped back, walking around with the latest iPhone on Snapchat or TikTok. They were meeting up with their friends, and because they can drink at 18, many of them were drinking. And then this van pulls up, it has these big speakers on it, and it starts blasting this music, the bass is heavy, and all these kids, they swarm it. And they're just dancing and having the time of their life, just like you do at prom. Israel is not a third world country overrun by terrorists, but yet, we're afraid it is. And moreover, while we were in Israel, this is when the entire world started to become overrun with the coronavirus. And let me tell you, we had a lot of fear when we were on that trip regarding that virus. There was this constant fear that we were going to get stuck in quarantine while in, in, in Israel, unable to come home. We were afraid that we we're going to spend 14 days in some hotel in Israel, having to pay for the hotel, pay for food, and then pay for flights to get back. I mean, there was a ton of fear. But yet, we maintained our faith, knowing that God had made a promise to Abraham, and by extension, to us as his adopted children. And you're included in that. You are part of Abraham's adopted children. So I want to end tonight by challenging you to step out in faith. Turn your eyes away from yourself and start looking towards God. Living a life in fantasy, living a life focused on you, that only leads to death. Whereas living a life in the reality of God, through His Son Jesus, brings life. Will you pray with me? Abba, Father, I want to thank you so much for that trip to Israel and for all those years ago calling me by name to take 
a ministry, a group of teenagers to walk where your son walked. And God, I just pray for the students who are in this 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 online live stream right now. I pray that they hear your voice, that they hear you calling them by name to step out in faith, to live in your reality and not in our fantasy, to turn our eyes away from ourselves and to focus on you. God, please keep us safe. But please, reunite us as a youth group. Bring us back together soon. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Alright guys, I love you very, very much. I miss you very much. Um, again, I don't know when we will be meeting back in person. Um, as of right now, I think we're next week is still live streaming. Um, and I pray that I will have all the worship issues resolved by next week so that we can have a more effective and easier worship service for you so that you can connect to your God and tend to connect to your Father. Um, but hey, if there are any prayer concerns that you have, um, please put them in chat. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, text me, call me, uh, DM me on Instagram, text or call Natalie, text or call any of the adults. All right, please reach out to somebody because we want to stay connected as a community. I want to continue to pray for you and pray over you as we deal with this very strange and unusual situation that we find ourselves in. But as soon as I know anything, as soon as we're able to get back together, I will let you guys know. All right, guys, I love you, and I will see you next week. Bye. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by Core Student Ministries. We really hope and pray that God spoke to you in today's worship service. And uh, you can find the buttons down below for our channel and also for the message last week. I encourage you, if you missed it, make sure you go back and watch that video because everything that God is doing here, He wants you to know about. And lastly, make sure you go and subscribe and follow to all of our social media so that you can stay connected to everything we're doing here at Core Student Ministries. We love you very much, and we'll see you next week.